This is Al Brooks. Thank you for watching the Brooks Trading Course. This is the first of three videos on the market cycle. I'll begin by talking about the four parts of the market cycle. Next, I'll talk about how a breakout transitions into a channel and the transition begins with a pullback. And finally, I'll talk about how a channel evolves into a trading range. Every bull chart is made up of one or more of these four patterns. And it does not matter on the time frame, doesn't matter on the type of market, doesn't matter on the type of chart. Every chart that's going up is made up of some combination of these four patterns. Sometimes the pattern might only be a bar or two long. Sometimes it may be 20 or more bars. For example, breakouts are often relatively brief and trading ranges can last a very long time. I'm going to be talking about a strong breakout, very little overlap among the bars. You can see here, no pullbacks. And then a tight bull channel, which has pullbacks that are very brief, one, two bars, three bars. And if you draw a channel, lines above and below, you can see that it's very tight. And a tight bull channel is a breakout like this on a higher time frame chart. So if this is what the five minute chart looks like, this is what the 15 or 60 minute chart looks like. Next, a broad bull channel. The market's making higher highs and higher lows, so it's a bull trend. But sometimes the pullbacks are so strong, the market becomes always in short. And traders can make money buying and selling. Even though it's a bull trend, they can make money buying and selling in a bull trend. And then finally, a trading range. The market is mostly sideways. Sometimes it has a new high. Sometimes the market goes above prior highs, below prior lows, but it's mostly sideways. It's a channel because you can draw lines below and above, but it's a sideways channel. Sometimes a chart will have only one of these patterns. For example, sometimes you'll have a broad bull channel that will last hundreds of bars. Now a breakout, what distinguishes a breakout from the other three types of market behavior? First of all, no pullbacks. And when there are pullbacks, they usually last only a bar or two. The advantage of a, a breakout is that the market quickly goes your way. So if you buy, you quickly make a profit. The disadvantage is no matter where you buy, especially if you're buying after it's already lasted three or four bars, you stop as far below. So yes, the chances are, if you buy, you're going to make money. So the probability is high, but so is the risk because the stop is far below. And that's always the case. Whenever you have a high probability of success, your risk reward profile is going to be bad. There has to be a reason for somebody else to take the opposite side of your trade. And a strong bull breakout like this, it has to be risk reward. So the institution selling to you when the market is doing this, they know that they're probably going to lose money or that it's very difficult to make money. They will have to use an extremely wide stop and scale in. But they have very good risk reward because if they sell at any point and the market reverses, their risk is very little and the reward is very great. You should not be selling when the market looks like this. You should only be buying. And if you do sell, it's virtually impossible to make money during a bull breakout. When you're trading this, it's good to enter as early as possible, but you can even enter late and still make money. But the later you enter, the further away your stop is, so your risk is greater. Bulls will buy for any reason. They'll buy the close of bars. They'll buy at the market. They'll buy above bars. It doesn't matter. The key is to look to buy, and most importantly, don't sell do not sell on a smaller time frame chart there are pullbacks and channels and on a small enough time frame chart there might even be broad channels and certainly trading ranges so for example if this is a daily chart and then you look at a five minute chart there may even be some bear trends within it for example this tail on the top of this bar on the daily chart was probably caused by 
a trend down on the five minute chart. A tight bull channel, it's a bull channel, and on a higher time frame chart, it's a breakout. So if this is a, a one hour chart, every bar one hour, if you look at a daily or a weekly chart, it may be simply two or three consecutive bull trend bars. What distinguishes it from a breakout is that on this time frame, there are pullbacks. The low of this bar is below the low of that bar. And there are two, three, four, sometimes many pullbacks. However, the pullbacks are usually brief, one, two, or three bars. Sometimes they're simply sideways. And it's very difficult to make money selling. So just like a breakout, traders should only look to buy. The market's clearly always in long. If you had to be in the market, you should only be long. Just like with a breakout, the stop is far below. So no matter where you buy and for whatever reason you buy, your risk is great. But like I said, this is a strong breakout on a higher time frame chart. Your probability of making money when you buy is high. You can buy again for any reason. You can buy closes. You can buy blow bars. Betting reversals will fail. You can buy breakouts of bull flags. You can buy bear closes. Betting that reversal attempts will fail. When the market is strong like this, just like with any breakout, it's best to buy for a swing trade, but experienced traders might scalp as well. The disadvantage of scalping in any kind of a breakout or a tight bull channel is that you may not get back in. So you, you'll scalp, take your profit, and then miss the rest of the trade. However, if you're able to re-enter, especially if you're able to re-enter repeatedly, then you can scalp. However, you'll make more money. Most traders will make more money. They simply swing trade. Again, on a smaller time frame chart. So if this is an hourly chart and you looked at a five minute chart, this is two hours down. This is three to four hours sideways to down. So on a smaller time frame chart, this tight bull channel contains maybe a broad bull channel trading range. And on a small enough time frame chart, it contains some bear trends. On a higher time frame chart, it's simply a breakout, a series of consecutive bull bars, and you don't even see the pullbacks and you do not see the bear bars. The third pattern is a broad bull channel. It's a bull trend, starts in the lower left, goes to the upper right, has higher highs and higher lows. However, unlike a tight bull channel here, the pullbacks last five bars, 10 bars, sometimes 20 bars, and sometimes the pullbacks are so deep, the market, at least temporarily, becomes always in short. When you see a chart that looks like that, while it's still easier to make money buying, the pullbacks are deep enough that some traders will sell as well. In general, if you're selling and the trend is still bullish, it's better only to be scalping. As I said, even if the market does become always in short, briefly like this, it's still forming higher lows. It's always in short, but only for a short period of time. And it keeps forming higher lows. Each low is above the prior higher low, and therefore it's a bull trend. As the trend is going up, the probability is the market's gonna go higher. If it pulls back to around 50%, the probability still is that the market's going to go higher. The probability that it's transitioning into a trading range and a 50-50 market only reaches 50-50 if a pullback falls about two thirds of the way down. In the first five or 10 bars of this pullback, it's 50% or less. There's still a 60% chance that it's going to go up and at least test this high. However, once it pulls back to about two thirds or so, at that instant, when it was a bear bark on its low, the probability was 50-50 that it was going to resume up or go back down. A lot of bears will trade the market for scalps. Every new high, they'll sell. Here, the bears lost. If they sold at this high, the market broke out again. And that's one of the main reasons why it's better only to be looking to buy even if the channel is broad. Experienced traders will trade both ways. 
but beginners should only be looking to buy as long as the market is always in long. Easiest way to trade it, buy pullbacks. Remember, breakouts, tight channels, I said, you can buy at any time. You can buy the high of the bar, the high of five bars, and keep buying. If a channel is broad like this, bulls are taking profits at new highs. They're not buying at new highs, they're taking profits, and that's causing pullbacks. They buy during a pullback, and they sell at a new high to take profits. Bears sell for a scalp. On a smaller time frame chart, there are trading ranges. There are often trading ranges on this chart as well. But if this is an hourly chart, and you looked at a five-minute chart, this would be about 15, 20 hours of sideways trading. It would be just a big, big trading range. And the same is true here. On a higher time frame chart, this could be a very tight bull channel. And if you go to even a very high time frame chart, it could still simply be a breakout. For example, if this is a five minute chart and you looked at a four hour chart, it may be simply a couple big bull trend bars closing on their highs. Finally, trading range. Even a bull trend often has a trading range. Remember, a pullback is a trading range. So even a one bar pullback is a one bar trading range. In general, I only use the term trading range when a pullback lasts 20 or more bars. I use the term pullback when it's less than 20 bars because if it's less than 20 bars, the probability is that the bull trend is going to continue. It's a pullback in the bull trend implication the bull trend will continue. If a pullback lasts 20 or more bars, the probability for the bulls falls to about 50%. The probability for a bear breakout rises to about 50%. And a trading range is a market that has 20 or more bars, and the probability of a bull breakout falls to about the same as a bear breakout. So when you see this, the chance of it having a bear breakout is the same as the chance of it having a bull breakout. It can come in a bull trend or in a bear trend. So what do you do in a trading range? Well, I said in a broad bull channel, bulls are buying pullbacks and taking profits at highs and bear scalpers are selling at highs and the opposite at lows. Well, a trading range is basically a broad channel that's flat, horizontal, and traders trade it the same way. Bulls take profits at highs, bears sell at highs, bears take profits near the low, the bottom third, and bulls buy in the bottom third. Buy low, sell high, scalp. Both the bulls and bears are confident of only one thing, that the market's not going to break out and that it will continue to reverse. They both know eventually it will break out, but if they're trading it and it's in a trading range, they're going to be taking quick profits. So they buy low, sell high, and they scalp. For example, bulls buy a reversal up in the bottom third and bears sell a reversal down in the top third, or they sell a breakout, betting that breakouts will fail. In the trading range, 80% of breakout attempts fail. Each one of these legs is a, an attempt at a breakout, an attempt at a bear breakout, attempt at a bear breakout, bear breakout. Bull breakout, it even did break out. Another attempt at a bull breakout. Markets have inertia, and they typically, 80% of the time, continue what they've been doing. So you just look to the left to see what the market has been doing. If you're here looking to the left, it's been going up and down and up and down. It's a trading range. Trading range probability is better for the bulls near the bottom and better for the bears selling near the top, but the probability is rarely better than 50-50. Again, bulls and bears are both confused except for one thing. They believe strongly that the market is not going to go very far up or very far down. And because of that, they scalp. They buy low, sell high, scalp. On a higher time frame chart, a trading range can be part of a, a trend, part of a channel. It could be part of a breakout on a high enough time frame chart. Again, every trend is made of one of these four components. I just talked about bull trends, and now I'm going to be talking about bear trends. And the same thing applies. Every bear trend is made of one or more of these four components. So if you look at any chart and it's in a bear trend, 
starting at the upper left, going down to the lower right. It's composed entirely of one of these four components. Each pattern may be only one or two bars long. Sometimes a pattern can be 20 or 30 bars long. For example, a training range it could easily be the entire chart. So we could have just a little bit of a sell-off and then a trading range and then a little bit of sell-off at the end. It's still a bear trend, but it's mostly a trading range. Bear breakout. Look at it. No pullbacks. Here's a minor attempt at a pullback. Sometimes there's a one-bar pullback. But as long as it's mostly a series of bear trend bars with closes below near the bottom of the bar, bottom half, bottom third of the bar, and not much overlap between the bars, I call it a breakout. And if you look at a higher time frame, it would be simply a large single bear trend bar. The only way to make money is sell. Sometimes you'll get an occasional bull bar. Sometimes you'll get maybe a one bar pullback. But as long as it's looking mostly like this with very little overlap, every bar having a low below the low of the prior bar, a high below the high of the prior bar, closes mostly below the close and lows of the prior bar. Anytime you see that, it's better only to sell. No matter where you sell, you stop as far away. So I said it's a high probability setup for making money as a bear. Whenever you have high probability, you have bad risk reward. It's a high probability that you're going to make money selling even all the way down here, but your stop is way up here. So your risk is great. You always pay for high probability with bad risk reward. Stop far away. And if you sell down here, there's a lot less profit left than if you sold up here. The reward is less, the risk is greater, but the probability is high. In general, if you're in a strong bear breakout like this, it's better to sell at any time for any reason and to sell for a swing trade. Experienced traders will scalp repeatedly. Scalping for beginners in a strong breakout like this, I think is bad because they'll take one scalp and then they'll never sell again. And they'll make a scalp profit instead of a swing profit when the probability of a swing profit was high. And the most important rule in a bear breakout, do not buy. On a smaller time frame chart, there are pullbacks and it's a tight bear channel. And if you go to an even higher time frame chart, it would be a broad bear channel and a trading range. And in, on a high enough time frame chart, there would be even bull trends in it. So let's say this is a weekly chart. And if I looked at a 60 minute chart, there was probably a bull trend in here lasting two or three days. On a small enough time frame chart, the market may even be always in long. But if this is the chart you're trading, you only want to sell. Here we have a breakout initially, but then we get a pullback, and then another pullback, and another pullback, reversal attempt. Most of the pullbacks are only a bar or two. The market is going down in a fairly tight channel, so if I drew a channel line below and a trend line above, it would be a pretty tight channel. And if I look at this on a higher time frame chart, it's going to be a breakout. So if this is a five minute chart, and I looked at an hourly chart, this would be two big bear trend bars. And because it's a breakout on a higher time frame, it's better only to look to sell. The market stays always in short the whole time. And when that's the case, it's better only to sell. Just like with a breakout, no matter where you sell, your stop is still going to be up here. Your probability of making a profit is high if you're selling, again, for any reason at any time, but your stop is still up here. If you're selling down here, anywhere in here, your risk is big, but your probability for making money is high if you're selling. And as I said, anytime you have a high probability of making money, there has to be a reason for an institution to take the other side of the trade. He gets risk reward. His risk will be less, his stop will be closer, and his reward will be more, but he'll probably lose money. If he structures the trade correctly and manages it correctly, he can make money, but as an individual trader, if you see a market that looks like this, it's very difficult to structure 
a profitable long. So it's better only to sell. Selling for any reason, selling bear closes, selling above bars, selling bull closes, selling below bars, breakouts of bear flags. Those are all good things to do. Simply selling at the market at any time. The probability is high that the market's going lower. So it's best to only sell. And if you're starting out, even for most traders, it's better to swing at least part of the position. And if you're scalping, it's better only to scalp if you're able to get back in and scalp repeatedly. The most important rule, the same with a breakout, you do not want to buy. Again, on a smaller time frame chart, this tight channel is a broader channel and it has trading ranges. And if you go to a small enough time frame chart, it would even have brief bull trends. On a higher time frame chart, as I said, a tight channel like this is going to be a breakout. And you usually do not have to go to a very high time frame chart. If this is a five minute chart, you simply look at a 60 minute chart and it's probably two or three consecutive bear trend bars, which is a, a breakout. A broad bear channel is a channel and it's a bear trend. It's a bear trend. It starts in the upper left, goes to the lower right. It has lower lows, lower highs. But unlike a tight bull channel, here, full black slash three, five bars, sometimes 10 or more bars. Sometimes there are trading ranges within it, triangles, trading ranges. And sometimes the market reverses up strongly enough to be always in long. However, even when you get a strong bull reversal like this, a pair of consecutive bull bars, a pair of consecutive bull bars again here, the highs still are lower. So it's still a broad bear channel, even though at times it's pretty bullish. Now, in general, as long as it's in a bear trend, any kind of bear trend, tight channel, breakout, broad bear channel, the probability is the market's going lower. And for a broad bear channel like this, as long as a pullback stays below maybe two thirds of the height of the prior sell off, the probability is the market's going lower. If you get a pullback that goes up maybe two thirds of the height of the prior sell off, if the pullback goes all the way up here, it becomes 50 50 whether or not it's going to go lower or go higher. In general, because it's a broad channel and the bears are taking profits at new lows and selling rallies, the bulls know that. So they're doing the opposite. They're buying new lows and scaling in lower, confident that pullbacks will go above breakout points. This is not really a good example. We barely reached the breakout point there. And here, this pullback barely reached that point. But in general, bulls will start buying at the prior low and scaling in lower. And then on a rally back to the prior low, they get out break even on their first buy and then with a profit on their later buy. Most traders should only be selling rallies and not worrying about buying unless the channel is so broad and so flat that it's almost a trading range. Bulls, some bulls will buy reversals up, especially here we got a second entry buy. You know, others will buy at the prior low and buy more on the reversal up. And then when the trend resumes down, here we have a double top bear flag or a wedge. One, two, three. They sell out of their lungs for a scalp. And bears will sell these breakouts of bear flags as well. On a smaller time frame chart, this is an hourly chart. It will contain trading ranges. That would be a trading range. This would be a trading range. And on a higher time frame chart, usually a tight channel. And if you go to a high enough time frame chart, it may even be a bear breakout. Trading ranges. This is exactly the same chart that I use for the bull channels. And you trade it exactly the same. 50% probability that a successful breakout will go up. 50% probability that the eventual successful breakout will be down. The one thing that traders feel confident about is that 80% of breakout attempts will fail. And because of that, they're looking to sell high and buy low. And because they're not expecting the market to go very far, they scalp. Both bulls and bears sell high. 
Bears sell high to put on shorts. Bulls sell high to take profits on longs from the bottom. In the bottom third, bears buy to buy back their shorts with a profit, and bulls buy for a scalp up. So you want to buy low, where the probability is highest for making a profit and the risk is less, and you want to sell high, where the probability of making a profit as a short is highest and the risk is less as well. Traders will sell at the prior high. They'll sell on the reversal down at the bottom. Here we have a second entry buy. Here we got a reversal up, another double bottom and a micro double bottom. Market went down, up, down, up again. Both the bulls and bears are scalping because they know the reward is small and that's how you should trade it. So you want to be buying low, selling high and taking quick profits. Again, on a higher time frame chart, it can be part of a, a bull channel, part of a breakout, but on this time frame, it's a trading range and you buy low, sell high and scalp. I want to talk some about trends and trends are either breakouts or channels. So a breakout is a strong trend and a channel is a weaker trend. A trading range, it can be as short as one bar or as big as the entire chart. And as I said, if a trading range is brief, I call it a pullback because I'm assuming the trend that came before it will resume. Once a trading range reaches 20 bars or more, the probability of a bull breakout is about the same as for a bear breakout. So the market cycle is this. It trends and enters the trading range. And then the trading range breaks out in either direction, and then you get another trend. And the process just continues to repeat. All trends begin with a breakout. It can be a single bar, or it can be a series of bars. For example, here we have a bull breakout. Remember, every bull trend bar is a breakout. It's also a climax. The breakout is the strongest type of trend, and there is no significant pullback, and sometimes it can last several bars. However, once you get a pullback, you've begun a channel. Pullback in a bull trend means the low of the bar goes below the low of a prior bar. We have a breakout, and then this bar fell below that bar's low. The market is now going to probably transition into a channel. Very unlikely for a bull trend to become a bear trend. Typically, when you have a strong bull breakout like this, you get a pullback, and then you get a weaker trend, a tight bull channel, sometimes a broad bull channel. So when you get a pullback, low below the low of the prior bar, probably the breakout phase has ended. If we get another series of bull trend bars, then I would say this is still part of the breakout. But usually, when you get a pullback bar like this, especially a bear bar and a pair of bear bars like this, the market is transitioning from a breakout phase into a channel phase. And then now, once we see this, a breakout bar with a bear bar, another bear bar, fairly deep pullback, traders will conclude that the breakout definitely has ended. They don't know at this point if it's still in a fairly tight bull channel or instead in a trading range. But in any case, the breakout phase has ended. And here, the channel phase begun. We pull back, we pull back again, a double bottom, a higher low double bottom, but we're making higher lows and higher highs, so it's a channel. And this particular channel is fairly tight. A lot of bulls are momentum traders. By a momentum trader, what they see is the market going up and they buy because it's going up. And that's all they care about. And they just keep buying as long as it keeps going up. During strong bull breakouts, they're momentum traders. They're buying for any reason. So as soon as the bar closes, bull closes, ah, I'm going to buy, I'm going to buy, I'm going to buy. We haven't had a pullback after five consecutive bull bars. We're getting a reversal attempt. I'm going to buy the low of this bar. I'll get filled here, betting that the reversal will fail. They buy because they expect that 
other traders will buy from them at a higher price and they will be able to sell to those traders and make a profit. So high probability of making money buying when the market looks like this, but risk is big because your stop is far below. Some bulls are value traders. Some bulls are momentum traders. They just keep buying as the breakout is continuing, confident that they'll make money. Other bulls rather buy pullbacks because they want to reduce their risk. By buying a pullback, you're buying at a time when the bull trend is not quite as strong, so the probability of a profit is less. You're taking the trade to reduce your risk, but at the same time, the price you pay is slightly less probability. So a trader might see this and decide, oh, I don't want to be buying when it's going up that fast. My stop is too far away. Instead, they'll wait for this, a double bottom bull flag, and they'll buy with a stop above that bar, or they'll buy with a stop above this bar, buy with a stop above this bar. For example, let's say they buy above this bar, this bar, this bar. As soon as you get that breakout, they'll put their stop here instead of down here. So they're reducing their risk, but the market is not as strongly bullish here, so they're also reducing their probability. Value traders are taking trades that have less risk, but also less probability. Momentum traders are taking trades with a very high probability of making money, but their risk is greater. Their stop is further below. A value trader, they buy for any reason. As soon as you get a new strong breakout, you raise the stop. New strong breakout, raise the stop. New strong breakout, raise the stop. Channels eventually evolve into trading ranges. Rarely, a bull channel will have another bull breakout and an even stronger bull trend, but at least 75% of bull channels have bear breakouts. So I always think of a bull channel as a bear flag, no matter how strong the bull trend is. Here we have a bull trend and a bull channel. 75% chance we're gonna get a breakout below the bottom of the channel. So 75% chance the bull channel will have a bear breakout and it will evolve into a trading range. One of the things I pay attention to is, can the bears make money? That's really important. How easy is it for the bears to make money? Can the bears make money here? No, really difficult. Here, really difficult. But look right here. If a bear sells at the prior high, he could scalp here. If he sells at this high, he could scalp here. So if it's easy enough for the bears to make money, the more likely the channel is beginning to transition into a trading range. So it's really important. Sometimes I'll get traders complaining to me, Al, you're always talking about bulls and bears. Why don't you make up your mind? Pick one and don't be so afraid. The reason I talk about bulls and bears all the time is because of the market cycle. I'm always talking about entries and I'm always talking about risk and reward, how to structure trades, because there are entries in every bar. If you understand what the market is doing, through here, you can enter at any time. If you look at the volume of these bars, the volume is big on every bar. So it's not like the institutions are all buying on this bar or this bar and not the other bars. They're buying on all the bars. And if you look at the volume on these bars, it's also big. That means the institutions are buying in every bar. That means there's a reason to buy or sell on every bar. And because of that, I'm always paying attention to whether or not the bears can make money in a bull trend and can Bulls make money in a bear trend because it tells me where we are in the market cycle. Here, I know we're clearly in a bull trend, a strong bull breakout. And now we're in a channel. I know channels usually evolve into trading ranges. And one of the signs that it is evolving into a trading range is that bear scalpers are making money selling at the prior high. So I pay attention. Are the bears making money? First of all, you get the limit order bears selling at the prior high and it's falling probably enough for a scalp. And then stop order bears. Once the stop order bears begin to make money, chances are we're in the early phases of a trading range. So a bear scalper sells at that high and takes a small profit here. He made money and then he does the same there. And then the stop order bears, once I see stop order bears making money, then we're probably in the early phases of a trading range. I'm thinking that, okay, bull breakout, bull channel, and here 
We have three consecutive bear bars closing on their lows. That enough is to make me think we'll get at least a second leg sideways to down. And I see bears who sold with a stock below bars are now making money. That increases the chances that we're leaving the channel phase and entering the trading range phase. In a bear trend, every bear trend begins with a breakout. It can be one bar, it could be five or 10 bars. Here, it's three bars. It's the strongest part of the trend and there's no significant pullback. Sometimes there might be a bull inside bar like this. Sometimes it may be a one bar pullback. But in general, most of the bars are like this. Very little overlap, big bear bars closing near their lows, lots of gaps, close of this bar, low of that bar. And on a higher time frame chart, it's probably simply a single bear breakout bar. Again, it could be a single bar, it could be several bars. This example has three bars. And as soon as there's a pullback, then the breakout phase usually has ended and the market has begun to enter a channel. So as soon as a bar goes above the high of the prior bar, there's a pullback. Here, this bar went above the high of that bar, so a pullback. Chances are the breakout is over. You can say the breakout continued down here. To me, this is the breakout phase, and this is enough of a pullback to make me think that the channel has probably begun. At this point, here we have three bar pullback, one, two, three, we have two bull bars, and it's following fairly closely after this pullback. So at this point, I think we are in a channel. We still have lower highs and lower low, so it's still a bear trend but it's a weaker trend, now it's a channel. As soon as you get a pullback, either here or here, traders begin to decide the breakout phase has ended and it's now a channel. If the channel is tight like this, all the pullbacks lasting one bar, sometimes two or three bars, then it's better only to be shorting. And on a higher time frame chart, it's probably still a breakout. different ways to draw the channel. You can draw it like that. You can draw it tighter and just use this, consider this to be an outlier and just draw a trend line like that. Just like some bulls are momentum traders, some bears are momentum traders and they are willing to sell all the way down, even when the market's extremely strong and the stop is far away. They believe that probability of making money is high. They know that their stop is far away and they're willing to take the bad risk reward trade because of the high probability of making money. So they're willing to sell at the low, expecting that any pullback will be brief and that the market will go lower and they'll be able to take a profit. So high probability, but big risk. Momentum traders, they'll sell at the low, they don't care. Some bears are value traders. They don't wanna risk that much and they're willing to pay for reduced risk by accepting lower probability of profit. Those traders, they only wanna sell if the market's expensive. So they're looking to sell pullbacks. That way there they can use tighter stops, less risk. Let's say you sell below this bar and then you enter in this bar, you have a bear breakout, your stop is up here. So your risk is less. Momentum traders selling down here, their stop is up here. They have a higher probability of profit. Value traders are selling here, anywhere up here, because the market's expensive, so they're getting good value on their sell. Here we got a low two bear flag, two legs up, one pullback, two, so a low two short. You can also call it a triangle, three pushes up, one, two, three, and it'll sell the breakout and use a tight stop. So low risk, but they gotta pay for it somehow. And because you're selling when the market is going sideways, your probability is a little bit less. And you're also going to have slightly less reward because you're also selling later in a trend. Bear channels are bull flags, just like bull channels are bear flags. 75% of bear channels ultimately have a bull breakout. Only 25% have a successful bear breakout and an acceleration down, probably even less than that. Same with bull trends. So anytime I see a bear channel, I'm assuming it's going to transition into a trading range, which it does more than 75% of the time. 
Now, one of the things, just like I talked about in a bull trend, can the bears make money? In a bear trend, I want to know, can the bulls make money? I can see the bulls have bought here, bought more lower. They made money here. They did not make money here. They buy that low. This high did not get above that low. But here, if they buy this breakout right here, they made money. That's the first sign that the channel is beginning to weaken, that the bears are losing control and that the bulls are getting stronger. So it's the first sign that the market might be transitioning into a trading range. So I want to see, can the limit order bulls make money? They made money here. They did not make money here unless they held and added on here or here. And they did make money pretty quickly here. Can limit order bulls, bulls buying with limit orders at the prior low, make money? Again, I pay a lot of attention in a bear trend to the scalping bulls, the limit order bulls, because if they can start to make money and I've been shorting, I'm going to start to transition how I'm trading. I'll start taking quicker profits and I'll start switching from momentum trading, just selling at the market, to value trading, selling pullbacks. And if it's easy enough for the bulls to make money, I'll start buying. Once you get a profit from a stop order bull, here we got a lower low, breakout of a triangle, triangle late in a bear trend, usually a final flag, not a good buy signal bar, bear body, but here now we have a second entry buy, higher probability for a stop entry bull. And when stop entry bulls begin to make money, chances are the market has transitioned into a trading range. To me, I find it very useful to pay attention to whether or not Limit order bulls can make money in a bear trend because it tells me that the market might be transitioning into the next phase, a trading range. Just like I pay attention to a breakout, as soon as it has a pullback, it tells me that the market is transitioning into a channel. I talked about the four parts of the market cycle, a breakout and then a tight channel and a broad channel and then a trading range. I said that when you're in the breakout phase, you only want to be trading in the direction of the trend. So if it's a bear breakout, you only want to be selling. As soon as there's a pullback, the breakout has ended and now the market's in a channel. If the channel is tight, again, trade it like a breakout, only sell if it's a bear channel. If it's a bull trend, you only buy. If the channel is fairly broad, you can trade in both directions. But in general, it's better to swing in the direction of the trend and scalp in the opposite direction. So if it's a bull, broad bull channel, you buy pullbacks and you, you can hold part for a swing, but bears can sell new highs and scalp. And eventually a channel evolves into a trading range. And then after the market's been in a trading range for a while, it breaks out and the breakout has about the same probability of going up or down. So a trading range is neutral the probability for the bulls and the bears has fallen to 50-50. This is Al Brooks, and thank you for watching the Brooks Trading Course. This is the end of the first of three videos on the market cycle.